and uh, Guy Reekman, head of Life University, was telling us how in Italy they're trying to restrict the scope of practice of chiropractors and make it so they have to get patients have to get a referral from the medical doctor in order to see a chiropractor in Italy. And to me, that just blows my mind, thinking that it should be the absolute reverse, where the chiropractors, as uh, holistic people, holistic-minded healers uh, and doctors, need to be the gatekeeper, and then they can refer out to the medical doctors like me uh, when necessary, not not the reverse. Absolutely. And you, you know I absolutely agree with that sentiment. And, um, you know, I think at the end of the day, Jack, and this is really what we're going to talk about today, is, is we've got to go out there and show that our systems, our processes, our drug-free approach is a more effective approach. So, you know, it's one thing to come with uh, rhetoric and, and say, hey, chiropractic is great. Um, but you know, and I know all too well, that when you apply a drug-free, chiropractic-centric functional wellness approach to a person's overall well-being and you measure results, uh, you know, it trumps the allopathic approach, you know, 99 times out of 100, uh, unless it's acute infection or something like that. So I think, you know, a part of that is, and, and you know, it, it makes me sad when I hear things like that, it's just such a limited scope of what a chiropractor can do in a country, but, you know, I think that we have to, um, you know, support the organizations that are going to go out and say, hey, you know, chiropractic is not a treatment for n uncomplicated, non-complicated back pain, uh, but chiropractic is a system, you know, and, and it's a system for, for overall well-being. And, and I, I was thinking about this the other day, but I, I really think that we need to brand our process as, as much as our product, you know, because I really believe it's the process, Dr. Jack, that we, we take, uh, our eight weeks to wellness providers take, that you take, uh, that's so effective. It's that process of combining chiropractic care with the functional nutrition, with great exercise, with great mind-body approaches. And when you put those together, I mean, you're removing the obstacles that allow people to truly heal. Yeah, I certainly agree. I think the process is definitely critical. I think when you talk about evidence-based medicine, all those medical doctors love to use that terminology. And I would put up the 10 chiropractors versus the 10 medical doctors, give them each 100 patients, let's do a 1,000-person study on each side, and let's see who gets the best outcomes. And I agree with you a 1,000% that the chiropractors will get the best outcomes. But I think you're right, it has to rely on good processes and everybody has to has to up their game. And I think that's one of my passions certainly is, is teaching holistic providers, chiropractors in particular, about how to up their game, how to really expand on their scope of practice and doing the things that you're teaching uh, in eight weeks to wellness uh, with uh, with people that uh, I come into contact with about, hey, this is the these are the questions we need to ask, this is the exam we need to do, these are the tests we need to perform and I think that the testing really provides that those objective results to put into the literature put out into the world and say hey listen this is the results that we're getting uh, from uh, you know from our approach what are the medical doctors doing and you know I think it's uh, a little bit, uh, you know, pie in the sky wishing to think, okay, well, we're going to get that study of a thousand versus a thousand. I don't think that's coming anytime soon. Uh, but, but that being said, I agree with you. Yeah, the process has to be in place, uh, and you know, objective measures are critical. Yeah, I read a quote the other day, Dr. Jack, that I absolutely loved, and it said, uh, "Never tell a person something that you can show them instead." And, uh, and I feel like, you know, being a third generation chiropractor and, and hearing about chiropractic and chiropractic philosophy my whole life, I think it's really time to transition from telling people about the chiropractic story to literally showing them the chiropractic story and what it can do in their life. So, you know, I'm really excited about this time we're going to spend together. Um, one thing I, I just want to make a note of, I don't know how many of the listeners uh, on the line on the webinar have actually read your book, but you know, your book is just fantastic. You know, every aspect of wellness is covered, including the wonders of chiropractic. And, uh, you know, maybe you want to tell a little bit your, your story, but I think it's really interesting. I've heard it several times, but, you know, we're, we'll actually get into this in the webinar. So let's, let's just hold off on that question. I'm going to just jump right in here. Uh, I'm going to go through some of these slides. But this one I really like, Dr. Jack. It's, it's what we're talking about right now. It's the allopathic versus the functional wellness approach. And, uh, you know, there's a saying is that people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. And that's why I'm saying is that we got to go out there. I think there's a, a large share of the population, you know, that if you ask somebody, hey, do you want to take more medications? My, my, bread, my buddy Brad Gowacki 
says, you know, has has a really interesting statement. He says, you know, are you are you more healthy or more sick if that medicine cabinet above your sink is chock full of medicine? And and people know I'm I'm obviously more sick. And if you ask a patient likewise, like I do all the time, hey, um, Joe Smith, if I could help you with your cholesterol problem in a more natural way without having to take statins and and the side effects that go along with them, is that something that you would be interested in? Because I've helped many people reduce their their risk of heart disease and, and their cholesterol problem in a natural approach. Almost everybody, except the person that truly loves taking drugs, is going to say yes to that question. So I think we need to switch that focus from what we're doing and how we're doing it to why we're doing it. Because let's face it, Dr. Jack, and you can speak to this better than I can, you practice in both models. So you know the what, how, and why in the allopathic model is very different than the what, how, and why in the functional wellness and chiropractic model. Yeah, most certainly. You know, I, I uh, learned early on, actually, after meeting my wife, and we'll get into that story uh, if you'd like in a little bit. And of course, I tell that story in my book. But, you know, is that, you know, uh, people do not have heart attacks because of a deficiency of Lipitor, Crestor, Zocor. And they do not have hypertension because they're lacking blood pressure drugs. And I think that's, you know, putting it to patients, as you succinctly put it, and as our friend Brad Glowacki, uh, you know, puts it uh, to, to really teach the patients and to open up their eyes, like my eyes were open. I mean, you know, Dane, you're lucky you were born into this uh, lifestyle. I wasn't. I was born into the opposite lifestyle. And, you know, to come to the realization of like, wow, yeah, that really makes sense. Uh, you know, the, the, the disease is not from a lack of the drugs. The disease has a cause. And you're right. Are you, uh, Mr. Jones, Mrs. Smith, are you interested in finding the cause? Because right. I'm the person for you. If you're not interested in finding the cause and you're interested interested in staying on the pills and the procedures and staying in that sickness space, well then, you know what, uh, I'm not the right doctor for you. Right. And, and I have a slide here. I'll, we'll, we'll come back to some of these other things, but I have a slide right here that really proves this. So these are the top, and, and again, I'm sure you see this all the time, Dr. Jack, but these in 2015, these were the top 10 prescribed drugs in America. So if you just take a look at the list, Synthroid, Crest, Crestor, uh, Ventolin, Nexium, Advair, you know, all of these. But look at the reasons that people are taking these medications and the reason they're being prescribed. You know, thyroid issues, cholesterol, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, you know, uh, GERD, asthma, diabetes. These are all chronic. These aren't acute infections, right? These are chronic diseases. And I would dare say that there's not one disease in this list that we couldn't significantly improve the person and the quality of their life applying this approach that you and I are going to talk about. Oh, I agree. I, and there's all different kind of lists, you know, like this, and, and lists I've seen, you know, contain, you know, three blood pressure drugs and three uh, uh, cholesterol drugs and the diabetes drug and the GERD. And the number one drug people take is our pain, you know, pillar, you know painkillers, narcotics. Uh, and you're right, every single one of these is reversible. These are not the one in a million rare genetic disorders that we're talking about. We're talking about things that are clearly lifestyle related and will be fixed with nutrition, avoiding chemicals and chiropractic care. Yeah, and, and likewise, these are the 10 leading causes of death. So, you know, uh, I, I dare say other than suicide. Now, I would, I would say that if we put somebody on, on a really good a wellness program, uh, you know, maybe, maybe we can uh, even help with suicide because, you know, I don't know about you, Dr. Jack, but you're, you're truly one of the most uh, mentally stable, happiest uh, people that I know. And I don't think that's by accident. I don't think that's genetic. I know my lifestyle has a lot to do with my mental state of health. Well, no, and you're you're very clear on that, and that's uh, that's you know, listen. Obviously, it just stands to reason that we're, when you're eating bad food, you're going to have a bad bad mental attitude. Uh, sure, we've you know uh, you know some of us have you know, have issues from childhood, uh, you know that that need to be resolved, and I think that those things are very important. But I think we can resolve those issues uh, and easily lower suicide rates uh, and lower rates of mental illness, depression, anxiety, uh, uh, anger uh, issues, stress issues by foods, the right lifestyle, avoiding the chemicals and chiropractic care. There is, you know, like I said initially, the thousand versus a thousand, the thousand people under chiropractic care versus medical care, there is no doubt their mental health will be much better in that wellness paradigm. And I, I, I think anybody who wants to practice in the functional wellness arena 
should have this somewhere hanging in their office to let patients read, maybe initially when they first come in. But one of my favorite quotes by Dr. John Kelly, who's actually a medical doctor, and he says that symptomatically treating disease, which you know I put in the word subluxation because it's something that chiropractors treat, without assessing the patient's lifestyle or offering guidance on how to change is irresponsible and borders on neglect. And so what he's saying here, um, Dr. Jack, is that we're actually being neglectful and irresponsible as healthcare providers if we don't assess that patient's lifestyle. Yeah, I mean, listen. Obviously, we can extrapolate that, and you know, uh, you know, we love to throw around, you know, issues of malpractice and what physicians are not addressing. And I agree with you, certainly from a medical doctor standpoint, which the MDs never assess those lifestyle issues. But uh, I think it really is important for the chiropractors to really get in on that because uh, they can make so much impact. You know, the days of, in my opinion, the days of adjusting, uh, you know, seventy-five, a hundred patients. That's a difficult proposition. I mean, I, I think that you know, chiropractic in that realm worked 100 years ago when we didn't have all the other garbage around us, but you have to address the garbage in the wellness model. I, I completely agree, and I've practiced both ways, so the results that I get, you know, delivering an adjustment into a healthy, uh, non-toxic body um, are just amazing compared to the results of just adjusting somebody and letting them figure this out on their own. So let's get into some of the questions that, that I put together because I think this will really uh, raise some interesting discussion. But, you know, so, so for people that don't know your story or haven't read your book, um, so what was the pivotal moment that caused you to completely change the way you approach medicine? Because I, I had a, it was interesting, I had a, a cardiologist in yesterday, um, Dr. Jack, and uh, I've given him a, a copy of your book and he's, he, he's read your book and you know, and, and it's really interesting to me to be able to, to have medical doctors who are in my practice to have your book from a medical, you know, perspective of, uh, of what your, your, really what your philosophy and your approach is and how it's changed. Because I think that's the way that we're going to also enable other doctors like yourself to say, hmm, yeah, am I really addressing the underlying cause of, of chronic health problems? Well, you know, listen, it, it all started with meeting my wife, plain and simple. I was um, uh, playing tennis with a friend of mine one day. He says, I got, I got to introduce you to this girl. She's 29 years old. She's a chiropractor. She's beautiful, you know, yada, yada. And uh, I kind of, you know, passed it off as, as you know, whatever. But uh, it happened uh, a week later. I was at a farmer's market, uh, uh, more of like an arts and crafts event. And uh, I ran into this friend of mine, and he said, oh, by the way, uh, this Dr. Heather is here. Uh, so I went up to uh, Heather and started talking to her, and we were engaged within a few months and married a year later and had a child uh, <laughs> a year after that. And uh, it was really just a, a phenomenal experience. She just opened up my eyes to everything about uh, the wonders of chiropractic, about holistic health, natural healing, and I started to change my practice very quickly. It all just made perfect sense to me. Uh, and uh, and it was really just uh, an amazing transition and started to change my practice and getting in trouble with the medical doctors and obviously with uh, my medical board uh, and uh, but I wouldn't trade any of it it's been a phenomenal whirlwind and it, you know brought me in contact with people like you and it's really been uh, really been amazing so I guess what you're saying is that uh, the uh, the medical doctors are going to have to marry chiropractors if they're going to change their approach to medicine well, my wife has j joked about that from the stage, you know, about, hey, listen, you know, to all these uh, chiropractic uh, women out there, get out there and find a medical doctor, uh, you, know, uh, you know, hook them up, uh, uh, marry them, do whatever you need to do, sleep with them, you know, get them, whatever it takes to, uh, this is a little bit extreme, but to, to get them to, change, to, to open their eyes to what we're trying to do. But, uh, you know, listen, as I've talked to chiropractic students, uh, over the last uh, you know couple years and other you know young physicians, hey, listen, uh, you know d don't worry about necessarily changing the the minds of those people. Ch you know, change the mind of the public. That's what's because the medical doctors are so closed-minded, they don't want to hear this message. They've been trained one way, they're brainwashed one way, they make all their money one way. They're not necessarily interested in hearing your side. Uh, you know, I could speak to myself as a holistic cardiologist. I've, my office has been open for four years. The world knows about me. I'm out there. Uh, the number of phone calls I've got uh, from cardiologists that are interested in learning more about a holistic approach, one. Wow. One over four years. Wow. So, uh, you know, let's not worry about changing their minds. Let's worry about changing the minds of the public, and that's, that's, that's how we're going to really revolutionize the world. I, I completely agree, and I, I think that's a point well taken. I remember um, Heather saying from stage, it gives sleeping with the enemy new, new meaning. 
Yeah, for sure. And, and listen, you know, Dan, I applaud what you're doing, obviously. And listen, when you have a, uh, a medical doctor in your practice, as so many of them are under chiropractic care, yeah, let's take the opportunity to educate those people because we know that they're open-minded. Uh, the fact that they're in your office, they, they recognize the value of what you're doing. Uh, and yeah, hey, listen, you know, here's here's Jack Wolfson's book. He's got 300 references at the end of it. I mean, what are you, what are you going to argue with? <laughs> what, what, what do you, you know, as a cardiologist, uh, you know, what's going to be your beef with what I'm saying. I'm just quoting uh, what's in the medical literature. Yeah, and I, um, I was uh, listening to Heather speak one time, but it's, um, I think it, it speaks to, you know, when, when people, when their financial interests is, um, you know, steeped in them not knowing something, uh, it's going to be harder to change their paradigm. And there's obviously their financial interests is steeped in this medical model. So I don't think they're going to be as open to a holistic uh, you know, functional medicine model when it's going to take literally take money out of their pocketbooks. Yeah, I mean, take pediatricians for example. I mean, they, they pediatricians do certain things, and if you open up their eyes to a wellness model, I mean, what do they? Have? I mean, obviously, the good ones can transition and say, "Hey, listen, I'm, I'm a holistic uh, pediatrician, and I'm no longer going to be prescribing drugs unless it's in an absolute emergency." Uh, but for those people, it's a difficult proposition, right? I mean, to, because the paycheck is coming in, the the insurance checks are coming in, and that is the model that that they're in, and they're not interested in leaving that. They've got bills, they've got loans, they've got uh, you know things in their lives. So why bother learning learning the truth? But uh, it's going to be uh, their loss. They're going to lose out in the end. Yeah, I agree. Um, so let's get it. Let's get into another question. I'm gonna I'm gonna start off here. What are some key questions? in your consultation process with your new patients. But I'll tell you one, one question that's really revolutionized uh, our practice in terms of a functional medicine chiropractic approach um, is, is really talking to people about their, their secondary health issues. So, you know, the, the, the brand perception of chiropractic, and it, I think it's really changed over the last 50 years, but I believe as a profession we've been pigeonholed into the back pain, uh, pain model of, of care. Uh, but, you know, I have so many people that come in, and so let's say that they have back pain or they're having a ridiculous problem or they're having headaches. I had a, a young boy in yesterday with headaches he's been having for two years. And, uh, you know, the second question I ask in my consultation asked, after what can I help you with or, you know, why are you consulting me is this question. And I preface it by saying we have a what's called a medical symptom questionnaire uh, that we give every single new patient, Dr. Jack, that literally takes them through a litany of different sim symptoms and also the severity of those symptoms. I already know what other symptoms they're having in addition to their presenting complaints. And then we also have a list of their prescription medications and why they're taking them. And the question that's really changed my practice is, you know, Mary, in addition to your lower back pain, or let's take this kid yesterday, um, his, his name was Nick. So Nick, in addition to your headaches, do you have any other health conditions that you're seeing a doctor for or that you're taking medications for. Now, I already know the answer to that question because I've read their intake paperwork. But what, what I want is I want to bring up awareness around these other conditions that they may not have thought a chiropractor can help them with. Because my lead-in, let's say, uh, with, uh, with the kid yesterday, he had allergies. So when I asked him, so Nick, in addition to your headaches, do you have any other health conditions that you're taking medications for? Uh, and he was taking a, a medication for his, uh, for his allergies. And so his mom was sitting right there. It was interesting. So I, I go right into my next question. How long have you been taking that medication? Who prescribed it? And it was prescribed by their family doctor, and he's been taking it for about four or five years. And so my next question is, you know, if I could help you, and I don't know if I could help you, but if I could help you with your allergies without the use of taking this medication, Nick, is that something you'd be interested in? And he said, absolutely. And this kid was a, was a CrossFitter. He was a very healthy kid. You could just tell that he was very interested in his body and learning. Uh, but you could tell he didn't want to take the medication. He felt like he had to take the medication because there was no other alternative. So the key thing here is asking them about their uh, secondary complaints, asking them about their medications, right? And, and you know, Dr. Jack, some people are taking five, six, seven, eight, nine different medications for three or four different chronic conditions. But the key here is to find out about the medication and find out if that person is open to alternatives rather than taking the medication, i.e. A, a more natural approach. Yeah, I mean, I think that's a fantastic example, you know, and I know that from my wife's standpoint, she sees a bunch of pediatrics here out in Arizona. and. 
the grandmother, uh, one of the grandmothers of, of the children was in with the child and she and the grandmother says, you know what, I've, I've been having headaches, uh, you know, you know, basically asking my wife, can you, you know, adjust me for that? And it was almost like Heather was offended, like, wait a second, uh, you know, uh, this isn't this isn't a simple process here. This isn't like, oh, nice to meet you. Uh, oh, you have headaches? Sure, lay down, and I'm going to correct that. And I think, Dane, your approach is absolutely critical, and that's what my wife is all about, and it makes total sense. And it's a matter of, no, here's, here's the program. You have a chief complaint, and the way we are going to address that complaint is we're going to do a one-hour intake. We're going to do an examination. We're going to tell you about all the things that we, that, are, are going wrong with you and we're going to talk about nutrition, lifestyle, chiropractic, supplementation, testing, we're, we're going to talk about all these things and at the end of it you are going to get adjusted but you're also going to get a, an absolute relief in your headache and your allergies and your hypertension and your lipid issues and your inflammation and your chronic pain because we're going to take that approach. Uh, I'm obviously not overly familiar with the chiropractic space and how a big you know, chiropractic practice works, but uh, you know, I, I just don't see the value in that model of yeah, seeing 100 patients and uh, you know, the, it's a 15-minute consultation when they come in, uh, oh, you're having headaches, let me adjust you and goodbye and then come back in and, and you know in a few days and let me adjust you again we have to do uh, much better and I think that educational uh, piece and what you're doing is is just so so important and that's clearly how I, I you know work in my practice I mean because the typical medical doctor the hypertensive comes in here's your pill for hypertension goodbye it's a real quick visit thanks for your insurance money right. uh, but in my space it's okay you know I understand that you have chest pain I understand that you have hypertension I understand that you have shortness of breath Let's figure it out. Right. Let's figure out why. Um, and you know, so I think that uh, that educational piece for for you know chiropractors is so important. Is there any other uh, questions that you think are key in your? Uh, you know, I call it connect, discover, respond. Doctor Jack is you know that first part of connecting with a person, really listening to them so they feel heard. Uh, matter of fact, the kid when I was done with his exam, his his literally his exact quote were. This is this is the best doctor's appointment I've ever been to, and I've o already learned so much. And I could just tell, you know, he was really because I explained things to him, you know, and I took the time to listen to him. But are there any other questions uh, in your consultation um, that you think are key clinical questions? Yeah, certainly. And I think you know, it's it's really beautiful, uh, you know, Dane, is that you know, you, Dane Donahue, you know, you're the best. You know that the visit you're giving that patient is the best visit of their lives. I know myself as a holistic cardiologist, I know that I'm giving my patients the best cardiology experience that they've ever had. I know it is a mind-blowing uh, thing for them. And of course, uh, they, they uh, very often give us that immediate feedback, but we can be confident that we are just doing uh, just amazing, amazing work. And I think that that connection part, yeah, you know, uh, with the patients, hey, uh, what's the end game? Did, did your doctor give you an end game for this allergy medication, the Zyrtec for the allergies? Uh, I mean, are you, are you're 15 years old. Are you supposed to take this for life? I mean, for the next uh, 85 years? I mean, what's what's the end point here? How do they plan on getting you off of that? Do they give you, I, I mean, are you are, are you interested in learning what the cause of that is? Right. And I don't think we have to beat around the bush and say, you know, I may be able to help you. No, we we will help you. Right. If you follow our program, we are going to help you. We're going to get you off the, the pharmaceuticals. If you don't follow our program, uh, for, for the most part, if you're, you don't necessarily need to be 100%, but if you don't follow most of the things we're saying, well, you're not going to get success. But I'm telling you, we're, we're going to give you the answers. What you want to do with the answers is up to you. That's, right. you know, that's in your part. My job is to give you the answers. Uh, but I think you know also you know on that intake, and I know you guys do a, such a comprehensive uh, intake as part of the eight weeks to wellness. And I'd love to uh, add any information I could. But I you know, obviously I'm heavy into nutrition, so we talk about their their nutrition. We talk about their water intake. We talk about sleep. I'm very big on on sunshine and sun exposure. Uh, you know, and and you know, oftentimes vitamin D levels uh, are used, but vitamin D levels are 
really a surrogate uh, to, to their health uh, because we know that giving people vitamin D doesn't necessarily give them all the benefit as naturally having high vitamin D levels. Right. And that just really is, it speaks to the, the value of the sun and sunshine and sun exposure. Uh, of course, I ask all my patients if they're under chiropractic care and if they're not, why not? Uh, and are they interested? in seeing a chiropractor because basically if they're not interested in seeing a chiropractor then they're not appropriate for my practice because I achieve the best results when working in conjunction with uh, with uh, the local chiropractor uh, we always want to check their pharmaceutical uh, inventory you know what are they taking from a drug standpoint but what are they taking from a supplement standpoint and educating them on what's appropriate supplements what are they because there's so many garbage products that are out there making sure that they're taking the best of the best and explaining why uh, their their supplements may may not be appropriate for them uh, and then of course assessing physical activity uh, talking about electromagnetic fields what kind of uh, you know toxic exposures are they under and yeah you mentioned uh, you know people with headaches and people with allergies I mean sometimes just turning off the Wi-Fi in their house at nighttime and getting them away from their cell phone 24/7 uh, makes a, makes a huge impact. Well, those are, those are all really great suggestions, and you know I think that both both of us have a very comprehensive process that we take people through to really to really open up that discovery process to get under the hood and really take a look at what's causing their underlying health problem. Um, so let's go to the next question: How do you educate your patients to change their belief? This is really important. Uh, I, I think this is something I struggle with, Dr. Jack. So I'd love your perspective on this. But how do you educate patients to change their beliefs and perspectives to one of I want to get rid of this symptom? to one of, I need to improve my overall level of function so that my symptom improves as a part of the natural healing, healing process. Well, you know, I certainly start from my standpoint where, uh, you know, as a, as, a, as a cardiologist, you know, and I tell them, you know, I went through medical school, residency, fellowship, and what medical doctors are very good at is applying labels. You know, we tell you 15 different causes of uh, hepatitis, and we'll tell you 20 different types of headaches, and all these different types of allergies, and different causes of hypertension, uh, you know, diff and different, uh, you know, causes of, of congestive heart failure, but in reality, everything boils down to the basics, right? It boils down to, uh, you know, uh, poor nutrition is a cause of disease. Uh, toxic environmental exposure, things like electromagnetic fields, things like uh, air pollution, uh, uh, indoor air pollution, uh, all the different plastics, heavy metals. These are the things that are actually the causes. And once you address the causes, then we can get rid of all these different labels. And I think if we would have sit down with the first year medical students and say, listen, we're going to teach you about all these different uh, types of hepatitis and all these different types of heart failure and all these different types of, of diabetes. But it all boils down to good nutrition, avoiding the chemicals, getting adjusted, uh, getting your sleep, getting your sunshine, getting relaxed, getting rid of the stress. Those are the things that are really important. Uh, and that's what I teach my, my patients initially. And then they say, wow, that really makes total sense. And then, of course, if we say, listen, for, for millions of years, human beings lived very healthy on this planet uh, as we evolved. Uh, you know, over 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 centuries and eons, uh, we did it a certain way, and this is the way we did it. We ate these certain foods. We were never around these chemicals, and if we eat the good foods and avoid the chemical toxic exposure as much as possible, we're going to get the great results. And people just love it. They understand it. It makes perfect sense to them as it should to any rational human being and they are in line with the program. Whether or not they can handle the program for the long term, you know, Dr. Dane, you know, listen, people fall out, uh, but that's okay. It's just, it's just going to happen. You know, we try and impact what we can and we continue with the education process and we invite them to our office and we to, for for seminars and continuing education and we send them emails and we send them newsletters and we keep in contact we're not going to be able to change everybody but we're going to change a lot of people I completely agree and I I said uh, I said the other day you know when when a patient asked the doctor well why do I have these allergies and you know a doctor says idiopathic that's really their way of saying I never learned functional medicine approach in school <laughs> You're just, yeah, yeah, idiopathic, and then the other cause uh, that us medical doctors are fantastic. We say it's a virus. Right. You know, 
what, what caused my heart damage? It was a virus. What caused, you know, my inflammation, you know, around the heart? Uh, well, yeah, it was a virus. Yeah, we're big on that. And virus, I tell patients, anytime the doctor says virus, it's another situation where they don't know what it was, and they don't care to find out. And my job, of course, is to find out. Right. So what is a typical new patient? Um, you, you said that you spend about 60 minutes, which I think is incredible, um, with a patient. But what is, uh, just take us through like the Reader's Digest version of what your typical exam with your patient looks like. Well, you know, I think, uh, you know, I did mention some of that before, right? We talk about nutrition. We talk about sleep. Are they under the care of a chiropractor? Are they getting sunshine? What kind of water? Their supplements, their pharmaceuticals. Of course, initially, yeah, we're talking about the goals. Why are you here? What do you want to accomplish, uh, you know, by seeing me? You know, I think the difference between my practice, Dane, and, and the majority of chiropractors is that, <clears throat> the the uh, people are maybe coming into your office because they do have a specific uh, complaint, and then it is your job as the DC to re-educate them and say, wait a second, okay, this is why you're having that uh, complaint, and we want to introduce this whole wellness model to you. Uh, are you interested in that approach? When people come to see me, it's like, yeah, hey, listen, I know you're a holistic cardiologist. I know what I'm here for, or I've read your book already. Now let's get down to the brass tacks about, hey, um, give me some more education. Give me some specificity to me personally, uh, and then and then let's order the lab tests. My exam is obviously cardiovascular focused. Uh, not much on the musculoskeletal side. I am a DO, but I am no, uh, I'm not uh, adept at, at osteopathic manipulation. Uh, I'll save that for, for the chiropractors. Uh, I also, of course, do an EKG in my office. Uh, we do additional testing, cardiac ultrasound, vascular ultrasound as needed, stress testing as needed. We do an EKG on patients. Uh, one of my favorite things also is a nitric oxide test strip uh, because so many patients come to see me with blood pressure issues, with circulation issues. So we have the simple test strip, uh, which is, is a saliva test. It costs 50 cents uh, to me as a practitioner. Seeing what their levels of nitric oxide, the body's main vasodilator, uh, are. And if nitric oxide levels are low, then we want to certainly put them on things like my organic beetroot powder and my organic daily greens, give them educational pieces, how we boost up the nitric oxide. And when you have healthy nitric oxide levels, you're going to be a healthy person and you're not going to have cardiovascular uh, events. So that's pretty much what my, my new patient uh, exam is like. And consultation is, and then really explaining the tests that we want to order, why we want to order them, and then, hey, listen, we'll get these tests done. Let's start you on the program, uh, and then once we uh, get you on the program, we retest uh, three months down the road and, and see all the amazing changes that we're going to see, and we're seeing them, on, on, and anybody who follows the program, they get the results. That's awesome, and I, and I would just say, you know, and to add to that, obviously, for us, because we look at the movement and the and the physical component of, of disease, you know, and I, I really feel like a lot of diseases, Dr. Jack, are movement, movement deficiency diseases. Uh, you know, the, the spine isn't moving properly, it's not aligned properly, and, uh, and so we look at these movement patterns, we do a functional movement screen uh, to assess core movements and core strength and uh, obviously palpation, and we do digital postural pictures of people to assess their posture uh, because I think so much can be learned by looking at a person's uh, symmetry and their patterns of distortion in their spine and subluxation. So, you know, just just I think the the important thing here is, is that it's uh, it's important to have biometrics to to measure to show a patient uh, what their level of function is. And um, and you know, I I I love our wellness score. I I just love it because you know they can argue with me as a chiropractor, and and I, I'm sure medical doctors can argue with with you as a DL. But nobody could ever argue with their own physiology. You know, that's tangible. You know, they can argue with our belief systems and our paradigm, but they certainly can't argue with their own EKG and blood pressure. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the, the stuff you're talking about is so exciting for me to hear because I know what an impact that is making on, on your patients, and that's why you have such great success and such great volume uh, and, and interest in your practice. It's, it's really, uh, it's, 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 yeah, to, to take this to the federal government and say, hey, listen, this needs to be rolled out on a huge level. I mean, the, the stuff you're talking is, is, just, is just wonderful. That's awesome. So, you know, since, you, since people have such a radical shift that they need to make in your practice, so, I, you know, for example, they need to go gluten-free or dairy-free, but, you know, I, I know that my practice, uh, and this is really why we developed eight weeks uh, to wellness, Dr. Jack, is because I, I wanted to provide a very – um, accountable system, a supportive system where people could almost, 
you know, it was almost impossible for them to fail as long as they followed the system. Uh, you know, so what are some keys that you use in your practice to keep your patients compliant and adhering to, you know, to a to a, a behavior to habits that are going to be a very radical departure to what they're used to. Well, I think uh, I think a couple things. I think the testing really uh, makes them compliant because it's one thing for uh, for. The cardio for me to say something about about paleo nutrition. It's one thing for them to hear it from their chiropractor. Yeah, I'm into the low carb paleo approach myself, and maybe they hear it from their trainer or whatever. But you know what? That piece of paper, that assessment that you're talking about, the objective measures, the piece of paper that is, I call it their certificate. Okay, here is your t certificate that says you have leaky gut, that says you are sensitive to wheat that says you have inflammation, that says you have these problems. Here's your certificate. Congratulations. Now what are you going to do about it? Uh, and I think that that is very motivational for people to see. Uh, and, you know, of course we need to explain why gluten is, is damaging, why these non-paleo foods can be to them because you know they've never heard it before Dan you know they're talking about that you know they've been educated on the government's food pyramid that is that is the sick pyramid that's what's killing people and only giving profits to pharmaceutical companies and to the government and to the food corporations so we, we give them that educational uh, piece and then and then it's a matter of the individual person what can they and do in particular in their personal lifestyle. And I think the easiest thing these days is to go gluten-free, right? Gluten-free sure. is everywhere. You can sure. find gluten-free bread, pasta, uh, beer, vodka, whatever whatever someone's vice is, uh, you can do it in a gluten-free fashion. And then also giving them that piece of paper because you know we're doing this super-duper in-depth testing from a company called Vibrant Wellness, and it's their wheat zoomer test. And we're getting, uh, you know, two-thirds of people are lighting up like Christmas trees on this test. And I could say Christmas tree because the results are in uh, uh, red and green yeah. uh, you know green being good red being bad and, and there is a there is a yellow middle ground but uh, you know giving them that piece of paper that says hey you've got a problem here uh, and you know let's put you on a program to eventually go paleo maybe it's six weeks uh, you know process and week number one you get rid of gluten week number two you're getting rid of grain but uh, in, in total you know week number three you get rid of dairy you know and so on and so forth and I think we've had a lot of success with that that's awesome so I, you know, I know for me, I, you know, I think creating a system, uh, because I think if, if, like you said, if you can cue people properly by showing them the red, because people understand the red, you know, they understand when something's not good. And let's face it, unfortunately, more people are going to uh, make changes because they want to move away from something negative than people that are, want to move towards something positive. So when you can give them the, that cueing to say, okay, here's where you are, here's where you should be, right, and here's what we need to do to get you back into the normal range. People get that, but then beyond that, for me, I think having that system to build accountability in there and have those checks and balances to, to show them along the way if they're indeed moving towards their goal is, is really, really critical. So let's, let's, uh, let's uh, get on to something. I want to specifically ask you this, but you know, tell us you know, three, uh, three things that you think chiropractors could start to do based on your perspective to get better outcomes with their patients. Well, I think uh, I think number one certainly is to le is letting the patients know just what they can do. Uh, you know, I, I, unfortunately, I have met a lot of chiropractors that understand the wellness model, but they don't. Uh, they don't teach it to their patients for a variety of reasons, and I think that this is this is time for everyone to up their game. This is the time to uh, speak out because, Dane, if we do not change the way things are going, uh, they're going to restrict us as holistic practitioners. They're going to get rid of us as holistic practitioners. The wellness model is going to lose and it's only going to be the sickness model. So the chiropractors have to be the leaders. They have to get out there and teach their patients on what they can do from a wellness standpoint. They have to continue to be doctors of cause and to teach and explain to their patients what they can do, how they can fix those uh, people individually and you know the and that extends to you know to number two as far as an important thing is that the chiropractors have to lead by example you know the cardiologists don't talk about wellness because they don't live the wellness right, right? they they uh, eat the lousy food they don't sleep they're around the toxic you know uh, uh, pollutants all day long they work in a hospital which is which is the most sick place in the entire world they swallow the pharmaceuticals they can't teach in the wellness uh, model but the chiropractors have 
to lead by example, talk the talk and walk the walk, eat the foods, uh, um, avoid the chemicals. You know, I, I speak from the stage all the time and I talk about paleo nutrition, I talk about responsible paleo. The time has come to stop eating toxic tortured chicken and, and corn fed, grain fed, antibiotic fed uh, animal products. The time is over for that. Vote with our dollars mm. and lead by example and, and eat the right foods. As a chiropractor, you can't be using Tide fabric softener and dryer sheets. You can't be wearing cologne and perfume. You can't have your office, uh, you know, smell, uh, you know, from air freshener. It's right. time to get above that, and the patients will respond. And and then also, you know, once again, obviously, I can't use my hands on my on my patients, day, and I'm not trained to do it. Uh, you know, I have to use uh, my mind. I have to use the lab tests. Uh, on people and and I think once again it's that testing that we use to give them the objective follow-up and say here's where we were before here's where we are now uh, and uh, and it's very exciting well I mean it, to uh, to speak to your point number two uh, is you know lead by example you know my, my motto in my life is who you are speak so loudly I can't hear what you say so it has nothing to do with what we say we're gonna do it actually has to do with what our habits and what we actually do uh, but I'll never forget the time. This was a couple of years ago, Jack, and you'll love the story. But I had uh, I had a uh, a woman uh, who was what my one my youngest son Shane, his best friend Alex. Um, it was uh, his uh, his mom and dad, and they came into the office to do eight weeks to wellness. And of course, I know them from being friends with my son. Uh, and I said to to the mother Rita, I said, Rita, uh, it's great to see you in here. I'm glad you want to do eight weeks to wellness. She said, Well. I have to tell you a story. Um, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I was dropping off my son, and you were outside in the yard doing some yard work. And uh, she's like, "You, you didn't have your shirt on." And uh, I took a look at you, and you're, you're not that much different in age than than my husband and I, John. And I went back and asked myself, if Dane can look like that, there's no excuse for us looking the way we look. And uh, she said, "I knew you did eight weeks to wellness, and that was really what prompted me." I never even opened my mouth, Jack, but. I, you know, led by example where they said, you know what, it's not normal for us to look the way we look. Maybe that's how a human being should look. So I think this whole concept of lead by example is probably one of the most important concepts in terms of what we can do for patients to really lead them. Don't tell them what to do, show them what to do. Yeah, you know, and you know, my mom comes into town from Las Vegas and she says, oh, Jack, you look so skinny. And I said, no, Ma, uh, you're too fat. Uh, your friends are all too fat. Everybody in society is too fat. I look strange because I'm in shape. But, you know, I tell patients, you know, um, uh, how would you look if you were around 25,000 years ago? Right. And you were in, you know, Europe, or you were in the Middle East, or you were in Northern Africa, or wherever we all came from. How would you look? What would be your paleo weight? That's how you're supposed to look. Because when people go paleo and they start to drop the weight, sometimes they come back in and they're like, "Oh, I think I'm getting too skinny." And I say, "You're not going to get too skinny. You're going to your body is going to get to the paleo weight, and that's where you're going to be perfect." Now, you may need to build muscle. You may need right. to do your push-ups and your pull-ups and your squats and your lunges and go for hikes and bike and swim, and you got to build muscle mass, but there's no such thing as being too skinny on paleo, and, uh, and and you're right. I mean, just the ability for you know for people like you and I and so many uh, chiropractors that just look fantastic. I mean, that just uh, because they're talking the talk, they're walking the walk, they're leading by example, and uh, and that's going to change the world. So a couple more questions, and then uh, we'll we'll uh, wrap it up. And I know you know you and I are going to talk a lot about this in September in Chicago when we do the event. Um, but can you go over some of the laboratory evaluation? Because you know one thing I hear Dr. Jack from the chiropractors is they're very I don't say nervous, but they're they're unsure about labs because it's really not something that we learn in school uh, in depth. And I, I think this is such a critical point. You know we evaluate spines. You know, and we look at the nervous system, but there's so much great critical information that can be gleaned by looking at somebody's laboratory or the saliva evaluation. So maybe just hit a couple of the uh, things from a chiropractic perspective, maybe not going into the fine detailed strokes, but maybe some of the broader strokes of what a chiropractor can do to start um, evaluating some labs on their patients. 
Well, I think that, uh, first of all, the, the chiropractors, um, and this is obviously we're going to go into super depth in this in Chicago, and, and really so, and the whole point of it is, okay, uh, here's the information so you can hit the ground running on Monday. These are the tests you can order. This is how you're going to interpret those tests, and then here is the action plan based on those tests. And I think that this is very important for chiropractors to understand because that is the way they're going to change patients. And I think also from a business standpoint that this is very important uh, for, for any provider to understand. the. Patients are taking the supplements, but they need to be taking the best. You're their doctor, you're their healthcare provider, you yes. need to be selling them their products and be proud of it. And I'm, I'm an unabashed, uh, unapologetic supplements pusher. My friends are, my old friends are pill pharmaceutical pushers, I'm a supplements pusher. Why? Because they work and they don't injure people. So. I'm going to be going over a bunch of different tests in Chicago and what I do in my practice and then once again the interpretation of it. And I think to the individual chiropractor, yeah, let's, let's start slow. Let's start with some of the basics uh, on people and as, and as inter interested as the, as the chiropractor wants to get uh, in learning more, uh, here's what the options are. Now in my pra practice, of course, I do in-depth cardiovascular analysis, but let's face it, every person who's walking through your door is at cardiovascular risk, uh, and uh, why not get the testing on a 25-year-old person so we can prevent something when they're 50? So looking at markers of inflammation, hey, uh, uh, you know, John, you've got, uh, you've got inflammation going on here, and in the long run, this is really going to increase your risk of heart disease, cancer, dementia, and stroke. Is this important to you? Would you like to uh, find the cause of the inflammation? So let's look at markers of inflammation. And of course, we'll look at the in-depth cholesterol analysis. And let's look at the vitamin D levels and say, hey, are you getting any sunshine? Are you, are you out there at all? Uh, this is something we got to get fixed. Uh, we can look at uh, simple genetic markers and of course thyroid and blood sugar. You know, telling people, hey, the typical medical doctor wouldn't tell you you've got a blood sugar issue, but your fasting blood sugar is 98. That's not normal. Normal would be below 85. Sure. And your long-term blood sugar control uh, measured as hemoglobin A1C is above 5. You know, it's 5.6. No one's going to label you as diabetic, but you're on the wrong path here uh, and any amount of blood sugar elevation is unhealthy you know uh, we, would you like to get some information about how we can we can fix that you know there's testing we can do as we talked about regarding uh, leaky gut right you know Dane uh, you and, and, the, and the holistic doctors have been talking about leaky gut for uh, for years and years and years and when Heather told me about it I kind of laughed I'm like leaky gut what's that I never heard of that but over the last 10 years it's all over the medical literature in the medical literature and over the last few years the advanced testing is there it's so simple and affordable uh, for patients and we'll be talking about the affordability of the blood testing and and uh, you know where the compensation is for the holistic provider uh, because you know this is really going to add to the doctor's bottom line uh, there may be some um, uh, non-practitioners that hear this stuff, but you know what, and listen, everybody's got to make money in this world. We all got bills to pay and we got school loans to pay and children to take care of. I mean, there's nothing wrong with making money. There is nothing wrong with making money, and especially when you're doing things the right way. Sure. Uh, and, you know, you know, Genova tests, uh, for example, Genova Diagnostics, I run their NutriVal, and that looks at heavy metals, it looks at vitamins, minerals, it looks at markers of digestion. Hey, this is an opportunity to put your patients on digestive enzymes, which they need. Here's where we got to up their probiotics, which they need. So, uh, you know, Dr. Dane, I'm going to be talking about a lot of these things in our Chicago event, and so so the doctors can hit the ground running on Monday, order these tests, interpret the tests, uh, and uh, wow, it's just going to be so empowering for the doctors. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, you know, for me, I, I I try to teach chiropractors something you know just simple, but if the only thing you are doing is finding out if your pe your patients are dysglycemic dyslipidemic, inflamed, and vitamin D3 deficient, uh, you're probably saving their life. And, you know, so we keep it simple. And I, and I would dare say over the course of the last 15 years, you know, I've done a lot of, of, of postgraduate schooling on this. Um, and it's a slow process. You know, it's, it's, it's definitely an educational process, not something that you're going to get with one seminar. But you have to open yourself up to discussion because these are real things that your patients 
are dealing with. And back to your point about making money, Dr. Jack, my, my personal belief on this is that people should be paid in direct proportion to the value that they create. So if you don't create any value for your patients, you shouldn't be paid by your patients, right? But if you're creating massive value for your patients, they have a moral obligation to pay you because of the value that you've created in their life. So think about how much more value that you're going to create when you're adjusting them and you're looking at their labs to help fix their leaky gut and fix their vitamin D3 deficiency and fix their, their, gly, their glycemic problems. So it's, it's really exciting. Yeah, uh, uh, no doubt. And, uh, you know, and I think also you know, in, in teaching of the patients and telling them, hey, listen, you know, this is going to make you a better uh, father, a better husband, a better wife, a better worker. Uh, it's going to make you more efficient at work. You're going to be getting this money back, uh, you, know, uh, you know, in spades. And so I think that educational component to patients. But as far as the chiropractor is concerned, listen, obviously, uh, I think you can tell by the tone of my voice how passionate I am and how interested I am in teaching what I know to anybody and everybody who's willing to listen. So, uh, you know, I think, you know, for you and I, Dane, I think Chicago is just the start and you and I are going to use that as a springboard to, you know, really change the face of, of wellness to get, uh, to get the doctors uh, trained to up their game. And, you know, once that game is, up, you know, up to, you know, we, we, can, we can do anything. Uh, and, uh, yeah, obviously I'm excited about it. Cool. So, you know, last question, and then we'll maybe take some a couple of questions, and uh, we'll wrap it up. But, you know, how can doctors make a bigger p uh, impact with their patients and their communities? And, you know, I, hopefully, I, I think that this whole webinar was sprinkled with ideas of how you can do that. Um, but for me, it's a choice. I was talking to a doctor from Australia this morning, literally at six thirty in the morning, because of the time difference. And, uh, you know, he said something really interesting to me, Dr. Jack. He said, you know, when I walk down the street in my community here in, in whatever town he was in in Australia, he said, I want to look my patients, if I meet a patient, I want to look them in the eyes and know that I've done everything I could for them to, to help them with their health. And he said, I don't feel like I'm doing that right now, just offering chiropractic care. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really my mission and why I – really move towards an eight weeks to wellness style practice is, you know, obviously chiropractic and the adjustment and being a third generation chiropractic, I call it chirocentric. It, you know, chiropractic is, is, is at the center of everything that I do and everything's filtered through a chiropractic vitalistic perspective. Um, but I, I also want to know that, you know, not only am I adjusting patients' spines, but I'm adjusting their minds in terms of once they leave the, leave the office, you know, and they're thinking about those things that they need to do to really get their health back to where it needs to be, not just for themselves, but I want people to think about that, you know, every relationship that they have, you know, when I think about my important relationships with my friends, with my, my wife, uh, with my children, I want to bring myself to that relationship all that I can be. And so it's not only about you, it's truly about service. And, and to me, happiness is about serving. Uh, and you can't do that if you don't have your health. And so to, to really impact people's health at a deep level and know that you've done the best for your patients, you've got to be open to moving towards more of a functional wellness approach to your practice rather than a chiropractic straight, straight appro approach to, to practice. I don't judge any chiropractors that are straight only. I just say that, you know, if we don't do it, who's going to do it? Their medical doctor or another chiropractor? Yeah, no, and, and I agree with you, and I'm not being judgmental of those doctors either because, I mean, there, there are some people that that's, that's their mission and that's all they, I mean, and that's their passion, and, and we should do what we're passionate about. I think what you and I are trying to do is to open up the eyes of the chiropractic community as much as possible to say, hey, you know, this is, this is another way that you can practice um, and maybe even get better results, uh, you know, with your patients, uh, you know, by doing it in this kind of model. Uh, and, uh, and, and obviously, I mean, it, it, it obviously works, but, uh, you know, it's, it's all to the individual what's going to work, you know, for them. But, you know, the other thing is, I guess, you know, to me, I would think as a chiropractor gets older, that this is almost like a, it's a, it's like a fallback. You know, I, I can't imagine, I know my wife as, as, you know, five foot four, 110 pounds, uh, can't adjust 75 patients a day and certainly won't be able to do that when she's 55 and 65. So how do we want to age in our practice where we're able to give patients the best value, uh, and I think it's going to be from this overall wellness model. Awesome. So I'll just uh, finish with this, and maybe we'll take a question or two, but you, know, you, you spoke about it. Um, you and I are going to be doing a program on Friday, all day Friday, September uh, 23rd uh, in Chicago. 
Um, there's the website. I'll leave that up, guys. Um, if you're interested, we're going to go deep into the labs, into this connect, discover, respond model. Uh, so that you really can learn how to do more and be more for your patients and learn the process of the consultation, the evaluation, the labs. And then like Dr. Jack said, you know, the tangible practical side of this is what do you do on Monday, you know, to help a person with their nutrition, to help a person with their functional movement deficiencies, with their postural deficiencies. Uh, so I'm really excited for that, that seminar, Dr. Jack. And let me just see if we have any questions, guys. Um, if you do have any questions, please uh, just put them in the questions dialog box. Uh, so, so uh, and, 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 and let me just uh, you know say one thing is that you know just to make sure everyone's clear on it, it's Saturday, September twenty fourth is the event. We're going to have a dinner on that Friday night, uh, which is going to be spectacular. We just kind of meet and greet, and you know you know and and getting down to some of these issues. But uh, it, this is this is going to be such a fantastic opportunity first of all for community building uh, and getting the like-minded people together uh, but then throw in the educational component and uh, you know this is my hometown of Chicago I'm super excited we talked about even going to a Cubs game uh, on on uh, Sunday uh, you know because uh, the Cubs are in town they're playing the St. Louis Cardinals the weather should be beautiful in Chicago uh, it's gonna be just a wonderful weekend yeah, and I'm really sorry I gave you the wrong date, guys. We are doing an event uh, Friday, September 23rd, which is more of a meet and greet, but the actual event is on Saturday, September 24th. So thanks for clearing me up on that. A couple of questions um, that we had. Uh, number one, is the September seminar for non-AWW doctors as well? Absolutely. Um, that's an easy question to answer. Uh, Jack's book should be a uh, textbook in all the chiropractic and medical school schools. Jeff, I completely agree with you. Uh, another question, when I get a money objection, I've been telling patients or having patients calculate with me the cost of their health care challenge over the next 20 years. What are your thoughts on that? I think it's brilliant. You know, uh, I think I call this future pacing. Um, Dr. Jack is, you know, I think that we need to because people, when they think in the future, they don't think of that as reality. You know, they think they have this, it's never going to happen to me attitude. So I think people, taking people into the future, what they can expect in their life based on what they're doing now, I call it blessing or burden. You know, when they get older, are they going to be a burden to themselves because they're so chronically disabled because of their health? Or are they going to be a blessing because they're, they have, they're so full of health and now they have a little bit more disposable income and time and they can bless their family with that time and money because they have their health? But, um, but I think it's a great point that you're making, Jeff, to, to show people this is what's going to happen, and this is what it's really going to cost you, not only financially, but in terms of the quality of life in the future. Yeah, I, I love it. I mean, that's just a perfect example of the educational piece of why we do what we do. So, uh, hello, my mom uh, kept me from joining on time. Has this been recorded? Yes, it has, guys, and we'll send out a recording to uh, all the registrants. Uh, that we're on today, and uh, just to be respectful of everybody's time, I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, I have 11:58 where I am, so we want to keep this right to 60 minutes. Um, just real quick question, piggyback on Jeff's uh, question: Are you breaking down the future cost of their health care or current health uh, care? So um, uh, we're not doing that. I don't know if Jeff is is doing that, but we don't break down the full. We don't put a dollar amount on it. Um, it's just more of an educational thing to say, think about, you know, what is it going to cost you in terms of having, you know, heart disease, uh, having to go for that, that stent. Um, so maybe just take or having to pay out of pocket for your statins or what other, uh, other treatments that you're having regarding your, your chronic health care condition. So, uh, so that's basically all the questions we have. Dr. Jack, it's always fun when you and I get together. I'm really super excited for uh, for Saturday, and and I I just I really believe in the energy and the Mother Nature, God, if you want to call it. Uh, but you know, I really feel like God has brought us together, Dr. Jack, to do some wonderful things in this profession. And and uh, you are you are really a role model for me. And I want to just thank you for all that you're doing for this profession because you're doing great things. Thanks so much, Daniel. And I do want to say real quick, I mean, for the people that will be coming to uh, Chicago, feel free to email ahead, obviously, either Dr. Dane or, or to myself at health at the uh, You know, uh, things that you want me to address 
uh, things that you want Dane, you know, to address, because uh, we'll be certainly be, you know, we can work that in there. We've got nine hours together, and then of course before and after, and the dinner the night before, uh, and the whole future ahead of us. So if there's certain issues that you want us to work through uh, and add in, uh, certainly please, please, please feel free to to go ahead and, and uh, send in those requests. So, um, Dr. Jack, what's your email real quick so I can leave these up here? Uh, uh, people actually, the best way to send it to me is paleodoc at the doctorswolfson.com. Now you're showing off your typing skills, Dane. I like it. Yeah, I'm not that great. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we, we all have our limitations. No, that's fantastic. Yeah. Hey, listen, brother, it was a pleasure to talk to you, okay? Nice talking to you, and uh, have a great day. And, and I spelled that correctly there, Dr. Jack? Yeah, perfect. All right, perfect. So, guys, I'll leave this up here uh, for just a couple minutes, and uh, I wish everybody a great weekend, and I hope you enjoyed the webinar. And uh, please reach out to Dr. Jack and I, I, either through our email or through our Facebook pages.